Hi, it's Mrs. Frobase. Welcome to the studio. Come on in. Today we'll be creating a mixed media artwork inspired by the artist Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia was an artist who was greatly inspired by nature and the things she observed around her in the many places she lived in the United States. She is well known for her up close and enlarged paintings of flowers with beautiful fluid flowing lines and movement. She often went out in the places she lived and collected beautiful objects from nature to inspire her paintings. To learn more about Georgia, her life, and what inspired her, I recommend the book Georgia's Bones, written by Jen Bryant with beautiful illustrations by Beth Ann Anderson. For our artwork, we will be combining drawing, painting, and collage techniques. The supplies you will need include water-soluble oil pastels, my favorite brand are the Portfolio Series, Elmer's glue, a cup of water and a paintbrush, a charcoal pencil, uh, a regular pencil will work fine too, especially if you have a softer lead like 5 or 6B, a tortillion or even some, anything like a tissue or something to smudge the pencil or the charcoal, a pair of scissors, a few pieces of tissue paper, uh, several sheets of paper, and a stapler. One of the aspects that's apparently beautiful in Georgia's works is her choice of color scheme. So we're going to choose either a warm or a cool color scheme. I'm going to be showing you both examples, starting with warm. So you want to decide which one appeals to you most. So let's start with a warm color scheme. You're going to choose all of the colors in your box that look like warm colors that you would like to use. I'm also going to choose a warm brown and tan color for my desert. I'm going to begin with one of my colors along the bottom for the desert. And we're going to overlap a lot of our colors. We're going, if you're going to do a landscape, I would say um, go from side to side with some long flowing lines and try to overlap each of your colors. Uh, you might want to have a beautiful swirl into the sky. Use your colors and fill up the entire area. These pastels are very soft. I always feel like I'm drawing with lipstick and it's kind of fun, but you don't need to press very hard. In fact, you can even hold them somewhat on their sides. How you notice I'm doing, um, get a little bit of a thicker line and fill in more areas. Don't worry about being perfect. Um, your lines don't need to be like a coloring page. Overlap them, flow your arm freely from left to right until most of your paper is filled up. The water, when we turn this into paint, is going to fill in all those little spaces. So once your paper is filled, grab your water um, just a little bit, try not to get a puddle, and you want to paint in the same direction that you were coloring in. Um, if you go the opposite way, you're going to kind of ruin your lines and your design. So flow back and forth the same way, just as you colored, but now you're doing with your paintbrush. You'll notice that your paintbrush is picking up the color, so you can kind of move it around, um, spread it into other colors and blend. Um, if your paintbrush gets a little too muddy or you have a really dark color um, into a lighter color, just rinse out your paintbrush, um, tap it on the side, we don't want too much water, and spread it around. Remember, a little bit of water goes a long way. And you'll notice that as you're painting it, it begins to look a little more like a watercolor painting and you're getting some beautiful flowing translucent colors, which are a lot more similar to what you see in Georgia's artwork. Now you can do the same type of design for the landscape. However, you could use cool colors instead. So this time let's pick out some cool colors blues, greens, violets. 
Now you could do a similar landscape design. However, you might want to think about some of the beautiful artwork Georgia did and her close-up of a flower. You may even want to get a flower, a real flower or a photo and look at them. This time I'm going to start in the center and just kind of make a design that uh, radiates around the center, kind of like I'm looking at the center of a flower. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, nothing in nature is just like a flower you might be looking at. Whoops. So you see how soft these are. I just broke one by accident. So don't press too hard. Um, you want to remember, overlap your colors. That'll give you a nice, beautiful blend of some new colors when you're adding the water. And just like the other one, you want to fill up your entire paper. So I'm going to keep going till I reach the ends and fill up all the white spaces. Now there'll be a little bit of white in between in random areas, but that's where your water and your paintbrush are going to help fill in every little spot and smooth out your colors and blend them together. Now while we let our painting dry, we're going to take a small sheet of paper, fold it in half, and use our pencil or our charcoal to lightly draw half of an animal skull on our page. I like to lightly draw an arch or a curve on the fold, and then from the top I go out to a point and back down to make a horn. Then what I'm going to do is just kind of define a little bit of a cheekbone and down to the chin or where the teeth go. I'm not going to worry about erasing. This could always be the back as well. And then I'm just going to define it and then keep it folded and cut it right on the fold. This will keep it symmetrical. Now we're going to give it a little bit of depth and age it a little bit. So I'm going to take the edge of my pencil or my charcoal and I'm just going to rub a little bit of a gray area around the edge. And then you can take something to smudge it with. It could just be a tissue that works well too or even your fingers. And you're just going to kind of blend that in. Give it a little bit of an aged look. We're going to create the eye socket. So here's my trick. I'm going to fold it make a little slit in the center just to get my scissors in there. And then I'm gonna turn it as I cut out the oval. Now, to make it the same area on the other side, fold it, you're gonna trace that, and then do the same thing to cut it out. And then I'm just going to do the same thing with a little bit of pencil around the eyes and smudge those. And I might add a little bit of teeth. Maybe it's even missing one if it's out laying outside in the desert or in the woods for a long time. Maybe there's a missing tooth. And add a little bit of detail for the nose where the nose sockets or the holes would be. And some other details you could add are some cracks. A few zigzag lines and then just kind of smudge them to blend them in a little bit. And lastly, I'm just taking my pencil or my charcoal and just darkening up the edges just a little bit more to show its form and make it look a little bit more three-dimensional and aged.
And let's create a three-dimensional tissue paper flower. So you're gonna need at least four pieces of small tissue paper, and we're going to fold them like a fan. It's called an accordion fold. You're going to staple them right in the center. And then very carefully and gently pull out the fan sides and then separate each layer of tissue paper from the last one. So the first one will be like your center of the flower and then the petals surrounding it. Now you wanna be really careful because as you're pulling it, the tissue paper can easily tear. So even though you know my videos are sped up a little bit so you can see them quickly, make sure you take your time when you're pulling these apart very gently. And now we're ready to put it all together. So we need to plan our composition. So take all of your pieces and move them around, play with them a little bit. Where do they fit? Where do they look the best? Um, do you want to overlap them? Do you want it symmetrical? Uh, you decide, but make sure you give yourself some options. You might wanna turn the direction of your paper if it's possible, if it's not a landscape. And once you've found your composition, we're going to glue it all together. And remember, just a dot, not a lot. We don't want a huge puddle, so just dot around the edges, down the center, and gently press.